In this tutorial, I'm going to cover six important principles of choke point design in Counter-Strike. Choke points are extremely important elements in your map, and they should be deliberately designed and created to enhance gameplay. So what are choke points? Choke points are areas of your map where the attacking team meets resistance from the defending team before reaching the objective. Choke points are also can be called control points or bottlenecks. Let me show you quickly what some of these choke points are in the official maps. On Dust, there are two choke points here, Palace Interior and Underpass. On Nuke, there are three choke points here. One is outside, right here. Another one is right here, near Bombside A. And the third one is right here before you reach B at Side Room. On Aztec, there are three choke points here. The first one is at the bridge, at double doors, and water. On Inferno, the choke points here are in this alleyway called Banana, Middle, and Apartments. On Dust 2, the choke points here are Upper Tunnel, at double doors, stairs near A, and lawn A, or at double doors at A, depending if CTs rush or if they stay back and protect the bomb site. Choke points on hostage rescue maps work very similar. Uh, the only difference is these choke points are dynamic, and I'll explain this in principle six. But the choke points on Italy are long haul middle and apartments and let's do our last map office the choke points here are a bit dynamic as well the first one is through the garage at backway another choke point is at main hall and side hall so when the attacking team reaches the choke point, they must either fight through the choke point and reach the objective, or they must retreat and try a different route or a different strategy by going through a different choke point. And just to be clear, when I say attacking team, the terrorists are the attacking team in defuse maps, and counter-terrorists are the attacking team in hostage rescue maps. Choke points are an extremely important part of a map because they are used to control the map's flow, pacing, balance, timing, and combat areas and playing styles. So let's go through each of the six principles of choke point design. Choke point principle number one, enhance and facilitate gameplay. This means that you want to narrow the flow of your map through architecture down to a single or double viewable entrance, such as a hallway, a doorway, tunnel, or an alleyway. This area will become a choke point where two teams meet and battle for control. On Aztec, the double doors choke point is narrowed down to a set of doors, so the flow of the map is concentrated in this area. Another example is at the bridge. The flow of the map is narrowed down to a single entrance, a lone bridge that the T's have to cross. On dust, this choke point, the flow of the map is narrowed down to a hallway and an interior of the palace. In the underpass choke point, the architecture is narrowed down to a single long tunnel that the T's have to fight through in order to reach the objective. On the map train, the back entrance choke point is narrowed down to a single alleyway. The choke point at the front entrance is narrowed down to a doorway that leads to side A. If you look through some of the official maps, you will find majority of the choke points using this principle of narrowing the flow of the map to a single or double viewable entrance. Choke point principle number two, choke point placement. Choke points must be placed before the attacking team can reach the map's objective. The attacking team needs to fight through the choke point in order to rescue the hostages or plant the bomb. The defending team's job is not to allow the attacking team to break through the choke point. On Inferno, the banana choke point, this alleyway, is placed before the T team can reach the objective. Same thing at side A. The only difference is there are two choke points, middle and apartments. 
both of these are placed before the T team can reach site A to plant the bomb. On dust 2, the upper tunnel choke point is placed before the T team can rush through and plant the bomb on B. This is the same for stairs choke point and lawn A. Choke point principle number 3, timing. Both teams should arrive at a choke point almost at the same time. Defending team can reach the choke point few seconds earlier to set a position. The important part is that the attacking team should not be able to rush the choke point while the defending team is just arriving there. And this timing of the choke points has to be done in the BSP blocking stages of your map. I covered this briefly in the previous tutorial in the map layout guide using Nuke as an example. But I'm going to show you a different example in a different map. I'm going to use Dust2 as an example and the upper tunnel at B choke point. So I'm going to restart the round and I'm going to use the round timer clock to notice how long it takes for me to rush that choke point in seconds. Uh, I have my knife out so I can run the fastest. And right about here 10, about 10 seconds. So now I'm going to switch teams here we are, spawned. I'm going to notice the same time that it takes CT team to reach that same choke point. Right about 10 seconds. Right here we should see the T team coming through the tunnel. So this timing is extremely important in diffuse maps. So when you block in your map in the BSP stage, very early you have to test out from spawn running towards the choke point and noticing how long it takes each team to arrive then you would have to refine your layout to match that the timing of both teams arriving at that choke point around the same time. Choke point principle number four number of entrances and exits limit entrance options to the objective within a choke point down to one or two entrances two pathway entrances through a choke point offer more choice and strategy for the attacking team if you are going to do two pathway entrances, make both of them clearly visible to the defending team within the same point of view. If you want to control gameplay, control the design of your choke points. So let me give you examples of this in-game. On the map Nuke, if you go B through the side entrance, you only have a single exit or a single entrance leaving you to the site. So this choke point offers no other choices and no other strategy other than brutally force yourself to fight through the CT team and uh, go through this choke point. If you choose to go to site A, on this choke point you have two entrances that you can go through. You have a choice going through the hut or you can go through the squeaky, the doorway here. Both of these choke points from the CT point of view are within the same perspective. So they can easily be controlled by one or two players, yet they offer a little bit more strategy and choice to the T team. On dust underpass choke point, there are two exits for the T team to take. One, they can go through the underpass, and another choice is to go through and connect to the overpass. Both of these are clearly visible from the point of the CT team. So again, one or two players can control this choke point. Most of the choke points on Dust 2 are single entrance choke points. The double doors is a single entrance choke point. And if we go B to the upper tunnel, this is another single entrance choke point. So the key for you is to decide if you want to use a single or a double entrance choke point. Choke point principle number five, plane styles. Each map's choke point should support various plane styles, such as sniping, close quarter combat, or stealth. The more gameplay styles you can support within the map, the more it will appeal to a wider range of players. Here are a few distance options you can do. Long, short, narrow, or wide, also known as battle areas. Dust 2 is primarily a lawn range map, so choke points such as lawn A, double doors, or upper tunnel 
are mainly either long range or medium range. But even within each of these choke points, you have the opportunity to be more close range and uh, have some stuff. So for example, at double doors, you can have some close range quarter combat. And interior of the palace, you're, you have some stealth options and more close range and medium range combat. Inferno has a good balance and variety of long range, medium and close quarter combat areas. So in lower mid, as well as the banana choke point, here, and middle, give you a good long range to medium range combat. But if you are to go inside the apartments, this gives you a good close quarter and stealth options. Italy is another map that's primarily long range. But even within this map, you have areas such as apartments, and little connecting areas such as these along with battle areas such as the market they give you a wide range of playing styles within this map so the best way of incorporating as many playing styles into your map and into each choke point is to decide what is the primary distance that you want this map to have so for example dust and Aztec are primarily long range and maps such as office are mainly short range and close quarter combat with stealth oriented. So pick a theme and then try to incorporate other playing styles on top of your main distance theme for your map. Choke point principle number six, dynamic choke points. Choke points in hostage rescue maps tend to be dynamic. This means that choke points change based on if the attacking team plays aggressively or passively. So when you are designing hostage rescue map, you have to think about the strategy of the defending team and how they may play the map. So this comes down to thinking of two choke points. First, if the terrorist team defend and stay near the hostages. And the second choke point if the terrorist team rushes the CT team and plays aggressively. Let me show you an example of this in Italy. If the T team plays defensively and stays near spawn, the choke point becomes long haul, right over here. If the T team decides that they want to play aggressively and rush towards the CT, then the marketplace becomes the choke point. Let me show you another example. Here's the left alley. This becomes the choke point if the T team rushes towards and plays aggressively. If they play defensively, then this long hallway, this long back alley in the apartments becomes a choke point. Same thing happens on the map office. If the T team plays aggressively and rushes towards the CTs, then this outside area, the courtyard, as well as this hallway becomes a choke point. If the T team plays more on the defensive and stays near spawn, then this right here these hallways become the choke point. So when you're designing hostage rescue maps, consider two choke points depending if the attacking team, the terrorists, are going to play aggressively or play passively. To finish this up, let me give you some ideas for choke point design. You can use hallways or tunnels, such as what you see in maps like office, Italy, or train. You can use doors or doorways. Most of the maps in Counter-Strike have these as a choke point. You can use alleyways or streets such as Dust 2, Italy, Inferno. And one of my favorites is you can design battle areas. And you can find this in the Site A train market area in Italy and middle street area in Mirage. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.